So thanks so much for joining us for another bonus content for the Tri-State Consortium 2017 Conference. I'm joined by Dr. Hashani Carter, a chairman of the board, president of the board. President, yes. And uh, he's going to, before we jump into the valley of the Tri-State Conference, um, I want to get to know a little bit more about uh, his background and how he came to the position uh, and share a little bit more about the valley Tri-State um, offers beyond the conferences. So Dr. Carter, you know, yes. uh, it's, you wear a lot of hats, mm -hmm. one of them being the president. How did that happen, and what's it been like in your uh, uh, start of the, of the position? Well, uh, every two years, the Tri-State Consortium Board uh, has an election, and um, I was nominated and selected to serve as president. I also serve as the EOF statewide director for the state of New Jersey, so uh, overseeing 65 campus programs uh, throughout the state, um, but also with my role and responsibility with Tri-State, hoping to serve as the lead of our group and passion group uh, to help serve the uh, purposes and the uh, outcomes of our opportunity programs uh, in the Tri-State region, which consists of New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. So, And how long, you know, people who are just getting involved with Tri-State, mm -hmm. they might not know the, the long history. Can you share a little bit more about the history of the program and um, its relevancy to, for today? Yeah, um, the history, Tri-State dates back uh, quite some time. Uh, it originally started in the 70s, uh, and then it took a little bit of a hiatus, and then uh, was reignited under the Tri-State uh, Administrator and slash Founder, Mr. Robert James, uh, who reached out to the counterparts here in New Jersey, and eventually uh, I'm bringing on the folks in uh, Pennsylvania through the Act 101 program there, uh, to kind of come together, because obviously uh, opportunity programs in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York uh, were serving their students, but it, you know there's, there was nothing that kind of brought us all together um, to really have that dialogue and discussion. Uh, and so the original intent of the Tri-State was to focus on advocacy development, mm -hmm. um, especially because you can't really use public funds to go out and lobby. Mm -hmm. uh, so Tri-State provides a vehicle uh, that allows for our respective state wide programs to do that. Uh, so for example in New York and you know they have the uh, HEOP, they have the EOP, they have a number of programs in yeah. New York and um, Tri-State also allows for New York, if I can just kind of step to a side for a second, just focusing on New York, Tri-State allows the New York contingent the ability to kind of come under one umbrella as mm -hmm. well. And in New Jersey uh, with EOF, EOF allows or through Tri-State, we support, um, Tri-State supports EOF, PA, and J in providing them the resources so that they can also go and conduct their advocacy efforts on the statewide level. Uh, so beyond the conferences that we traditionally host every two years, Tri-State provides that vehicle uh, and that support uh, for our respective programs. And it has a long and rich history, as you just mentioned. Yes. Um, some have used to used to attend the conferences ago. Mm -hmm. uh, for some who someone who's watching who may not have visited the conference in recent years, mm -hmm. um, what would you say to them, you know, in terms of why you should come back and start attending conferences again for the Tri-State Consortium? One of the unique things about the Tri-State Conference is, is, is that one you are coming to an event where there's already a shared understanding of what opportunity programs are. And so in my own experience, when you travel to conferences around the nation, around the world, um, you find that you'll get exposure and experience and uh, be introduced to a lot of the concepts in higher education with regards to access, equity, diversity, inclusion, um, but not necessarily as tailored or as focused with regards to how opportunity programs tend to uh, address those items. Um, and so being in an environment where there's already an understanding of what opportunity programs are allows for participants to be able to go to workshops to hear best practices that are more tailored to um, an audience who has that experience. And so we also believe that for those who are not part of the Tri-State Consortium or who are not part of opportunity programs in this region, it also provides those participants the ability to come and get exposure to best practices that I think are applicable for many institutions um, when you're looking at helping students who come from economically and educationally disadvantaged backgrounds. Um, what 
steps or what items are, are in place, whether it's looking at a summer bridge program, what do you do during the academic year, uh, what components um, do you have in place to support students, uh, what parallels are there, uh, and so that folks can leave and kind of contextualize what they've gotten from the Tri-State experience with what they're seeing at their own respective campuses. And so I think the Tri-State Consortium Conference uh, really provides a, a, a diversity of experiences, exposures, uh, best practices, um, and like I said, I think that because it is uh, a community of opportunity programs coming together, uh, you can learn about how to operate and navigate within that kind of paradigm of operation. Uh, and so really I think it's a, it's a benefit for those who are part of our community to attend and for those who are not part of our community to attend. Agreed. And uh, I know with students who are being served by the programs, the, the, the diverse needs are getting even that much more diverse. Yeah. So it's almost like it is an opportunity to master a different tool in the toolbox mm -hmm. or brush up on some mm -hmm. uh, as well. Um, we know that tries the needs of opportunities programs and the, so the students that we serve are constantly shifting, changing, but at some level they still still remain the same. Um, when it comes to Tri-State Consortium as a conference, um, what are thing what what's the next level or the um, next next way you're helping uh, the programs in the respective states mm -hmm. beyond the conference? Well. I'm going to speak about this conference that we're currently uh, having, uh, the 14th Biennial Conference. The vision for this conference was to allow for our participants to start to get a sense of what is occurring nationally, what is occurring internationally, mm -hmm. and how those things are coming to impact uh, decisions that are going to be made on local campuses. And so we want our participants to understand that while you're participating in workshops that help you kind of address some of the day-to-day -day or the month-to-month -month or the semester or the year um, items that you're, you're, you're looking to, to, to plan, what is the thought process about five years from now? Mm. What is the thought process about 10 years from now? What shifts are occurring internationally that are going to impact institutions operating here in the United States? Internationally. There you go. And so, you know, we're looking, you know, at globalization of education mm. and making sure that our students who will become alumni are not only competitive for local markets and national markets, but global markets. Uh, and so really, I think, especially with the emergence of technology uh, and institutions looking to compete not only just locally, but internationally as well, uh, we have to start kind of being able to provide that kind of information uh, for our folks to start thinking about, because I really think that Relying on information to come top down is not always the most efficient mm -hmm. way. Um, if as a program director or as a program staff, even if I were just a recruiter, um, I need to start thinking about and helping my program think about how we're examining our students in a more global perspective. What's the global lens? Uh, what's happening in Dubai? Uh, what is the shift that's occurring in Dubai? What kind of markets are emerging? Uh, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in business, whether it's in law, whether it's in engineering, you name it. Uh, because obviously that's going to affect our students. Uh, we have a gentleman who's going to be speaking on Tuesday, uh, the 25th, Dr. Jamil Salmi. Yeah. And one of the things he's going to talk about and highlight to our group is there's a shift in the job market you know every so often and, and if you look at the jobs that are emerging today and the jobs that have yet to even be developed um, you'll notice that you know the curriculums that are being developed do they cater to that mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of jobs that are going to become obsolete um, and so you know when you're thinking about who you're going out and you're recruiting you're thinking about the students who are coming in you also have to be thinking about well what are we preparing them for there's the immediate job market which is great that everybody wants to be able to get a job mm -hmm. immediately, but is, this, is it sustainable? Um, are we preparing students to be able to be long-term, employable, giving back alumni? Yeah. Um, and so we need to be thinking about, is this a career that they're pursuing that's going to exist 40 years from now? Okay, and we understand that you know life learning is important, yeah. um, but we also need our students to understand that as they're pursuing their education, um, that they're thinking about these things. And in order for them to sometimes be thinking about them th about these things, we need to be thinking about yeah. these things. And so I think it's important that we help contextualize everything that we do, not only just on a local level, but start to think about the larger picture internationally to, to the national scale.
So Tri-State is not just thinking about Tri-State, thinking international uh, for our students and how to empower our staff and counselors and directors yes. Yes. to uh, uh, serve our students best. Yes. If someone is eager to get involved to help out, whatever state they're from, mm -hmm. how would that, how would that process go and what, what would that look like? Well, first they can go to our website, mm -hmm. www.tristateconsortium.com, um, and they can uh, contact us through the website. Uh, but our organization is a, a collection of volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have folks who are counselors, we have folks who are directors, um, who come from opportunity programs in the New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania region. So um, really it's about getting engaged with the leadership of those respective state associations uh, and then just letting them know that you want to get involved with Tri-State. Uh, we are open for those who really want to kind of, you know, roll their sleeves up and mm -hmm. uh, to do the kind of work that opportunity program uh, professionals do um, to get engaged. Um, I will say that it, it is it is a labor of love for all of us. Um, we, again, we are a collection of really dedicated professionals. I can't I can't understate that. Um, who come together and we meet quarterly uh, to really engage in dialogue about how we can enhance what's happening on the campuses and our conference is kind of a um, you know kind of a I don't know I'm thinking of a term but uh, a collection of, of all that effort mm -hmm. um, and so we get together we have discussions and it also helps us uh, understand what each one is going through within their respective states especially in the political landscape um, how to kind of yeah. understand what our programs are dealing with uh, so that we can kind of offer that to our professional associations in terms of advocacy mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier um, what school what skills what tools can we do to to help each other and so for example New York because they've learned from New Jersey about the advocacy effort has done a tremendous job of connecting with the legislator uh, legislature to at the point now where they're getting you know, surplus, right? surplus. Well, yeah. not necessarily surplus, but they're getting tremendous support. Mm -hmm. um, they have gotten uh, a significant amount of contribution, a, a committed contribution, mm -hmm. uh, from the legis legislature for a series of years, mm -hmm. and I believe it's five years, where there's a progressive increase wow. uh, in funding. And so, yeah, right. Wow. Um, we'd love to be able to experience that in, in both New York, excuse me, New Jersey and, and Pennsylvania. Uh, but again, they serve as an example for yeah. New Jersey to be able to come back and say. You know, our legislators, look at what the legislators are doing in New York for their program, and we have comparable success, you know. So, um, and the same for PA with the Act 101 program. And so I think we can help each other in that regard. We can help our legislators in that regard to know what their colleagues um, in the other states are, are doing. Uh, and so we really look at ourselves as a tool, as a vehicle to help serve the students in the programs. Awesome. And so if you're wanting to, again, like as Dr. Carter said, if you want to learn more about how to join, go to the website and engage. I mean, we talk about research and policy and trends. We're also the, the living examples of what these case studies of what works and what we're trying. And you can be part of that, too. So go to tristateconsortium.com. Um, any last words or any final thoughts that you want to leave uh, viewers with? Well, I think that for anyone who has never come to Tri-State to really uh, come with an open mind, um, to really engage. Um, one of the things I think that people really get the most out of coming from uh, to our Tri-State Conference is uh, coming with a sense of purpose to leave with the information and the tools uh, to go back and be effective agents of change on their campus. Uh, as our speaker said yesterday, Dr. Strayhorn, yeah. uh, to feel uncomfortable but to be comfortable feeling uncomfortable, yeah. um, to be the change agent on your campus, uh, to go back and be empowered, to uh, be able to understand that, you know, although opportunity programs have a long and rich history, uh, we still have relevance today and will continue to have relevance um, because there's still a need. Um, and so we hope that we continue to be able to be a vehicle uh, for professionals in higher education to come, to learn, and to collaborate and to engage, and so that we can continue to be uh, hopefully uh, positive agents of change moving forward. So, Well, thanks so much for sharing. Thank you. And Thank you for having me. Thanks for making the time. Appreciate it. Thanks.